Are you also reading these headlines about Tesla switching over from 21700 to 4680 cells? Or you maybe heard about the recent announcement from CATL about using sodium ion batteries? Then everybody is always talking about solid state batteries. Are these actually lithium ion batteries or not? We hear about NMC, LFP. So if you are confused about all these headlines and you want to be part of the conversation, then this video is for you. Hi everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. I didn't do a video since a very long time because I wrote something for you. And this is a book that you can get on Amazon. It's self-published. It's called The Drive to Electric, How Innovative Minds Are Shaping Our Future. It's about our world transitioning from engines to battery electric vehicles and also from burning coal energy production towards more renewable energy sources so I interviewed thought leaders around the world in India, China, Europe, US, Canada to hear their story, to hear their why, why are they working on these technology and what is their vision for our future. I wrote it in a language so my mom and dad can understand it and I hope this book will help you to separate fact from fiction in a topic, a subject that is so often hyped by media. Today, we're doing a little bit the same. We are talking about batteries, about the battery nomenclature that we hear so often about and want to understand what it is about. So first of all, what is a battery? A battery is an electrochemical device that stores energy and delivers energy on demand. So think about your smartphone, you have a little lithium ion battery in there, you charge it up, you use it when you need it, and once the battery is low, you charge it up again. The same is true for electric vehicles. Maybe some of you drive electric already or know somebody who does. So you drive a certain mileage, and then once the battery is low, you charge it up again, you plug it in, so. Okay, we all know that this is how batteries work. Now let's talk about classification of batteries. Batteries can be classified in two big types. First of all, primary batteries or non-rechargeable ones. You can think about these little coin cells that you find in kitchen scales or other smaller devices. It's basically single use. The type of batteries we want to talk about today are rechargeable batteries. For rechargeable or secondary batteries, there is really lots of different chemistries out there. The chemistry that you might be very familiar with, which is also the oldest type of battery chemistry, is lead acid. Lead acid is used as the classical starter battery in your car. I have one here because some of you know that I am electrifying a Jeep together with my husband and this would be the starter battery. And as you can probably see, this battery is very heavy, so the energy density is very low. And this is also the reason these batteries are typically not used in an all electric vehicle. Instead, for all electric battery electric vehicles, um, we're using lithium ion batteries. And these are the batteries that we want to talk about today. Just to let you know, there is so many more different chemistries out there. Just to mention a few, sodium ion batteries were just announced by CATL. Then there is also something called a flow battery. And also, for example, liquid metal batteries. Both of these chemistries are more used in the stationary energy storage system area for liquid metal batteries for example they need a very high temperature to work so this is a little bit tricky for the electric vehicle area so maybe you know that there are three big types or shapes of lithium-ion batteries cylindrical ones prismatic ones and pouch cells these are cylindrical cells and these are the ones that you find in a Tesla so thousands of these connected with each other. Cylindrical cells are classified according to their dimensions, diameter and length. If Tesla talks about the 18650 cell or sometimes also called 1865, then it is a diameter of 18 millimeters and a length of 65 millimeters. The newest ones is the 4680 cell, so it's 46 millimeters in diameter and 80 millimeters in length. 
Wonderful! Completely different format but same chemistry would be a pouch cell. A pouch cell has this shape. Um, they come in all different shapes, like most of them are a little bit longer and sometimes the tabs are on one side, sometimes they are on opposite sides. As you can see they are very very thin. The third shape or type of lithium ion batteries are prismatic cells, so this would be a prismatic cell. You can see it's a different shape and also they have a metal case. So if you compare this to uh, a pouch cell, you see that it's just a thin foil around the cell and in this case you really have a hard casing. Different shapes come with different advantages and disadvantages. If you ask me which of these shapes will be dominant in the future, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you right now. If we look at current development and market trends worldwide from battery manufacturers and OEMs, I can say that all three shapes will be dominant in the next decade. The next thing we need to understand when talking about battery nomenclature is the main components of every lithium ion battery. This is independent from the shape. So there are four main components. First it's the cathode, so the positive electrode. Second is the anode, so the negative electrode. Then there is a separator and the fourth component is the electrolyte. Independent from the shape, Every lithium ion battery consists of several layers of these components. For cylindrical cells, they are wound up like in a circle. For pouch cells, these layers are kind of stacked. And for prismatic cells, these layers are again wound but more in an elliptical shape. So these are the difference between the shapes. Let's start with the electrolyte. The electrolyte is the material in a lithium ion battery that actually allows the lithium ions to travel. And to understand that, let's look into how lithium ion batteries work. So I will have a little picture showing you how the lithium ions travel between the positive and the negative electrode and at the same time the electrons are traveling the other way when you charge and discharge the battery. If you want to understand that in detail I highly recommend you to watch a video by The Limiting Factor um, that I recently watched and it's just the most wonderful video I have seen so far describing how a battery works really on the atomic and really on the electrode level and so this gives you really the perfect understanding of how it works and it's very complex. For us these details are not so important, we just want to understand that this electrolyte can either be liquid or solid. The state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery has a liquid electrolyte and when everybody is talking about solid-state batteries what they're actually meaning is that the electrolyte is solid. The next component that I want to talk about is the anode. The anode is the negative electrode and there are two typically three types that people are talking about. State of the art is graphite. Graphite is carbon based and it's actually stacked layers of graphene and I will show a little video where you can see how lithium ions when they travel through the electrolyte through the separator they can intercalate between these sheets and also get out of it again which makes this a very interesting material for lithium ion batteries. What people also investigate is adding a little bit of silicon to these graphite anodes. What this helps with is increasing the energy density because silicon can attract or bind more lithium ions than graphite. The disadvantage about this is that it leads to a volumetric expansion, so a deformation actually of the cell between the charged and discharged state and this is a little bit tricky when integrating a cell into a pack. A third type of anode that people talk a lot about today is lithium metal anode. So if you hear about lithium metal batteries, this means that the anode is the pure lithium metal. The last component that we want to talk about is the cathode, finally. But the cathode is honestly maybe the most important component because in all the headlines and when people talk about batteries, they actually very often talk about the cathodes. There are many different cathode materials out there. The two most important ones are NMC and LFP. NMC stands for lithium nickel manganese cobalt and this is the cathode that is 
state-of-the-art right now for electric vehicles. Compared to that, another important cathode material is LFP, which is lithium iron phosphate. Historically, LFP is used in the stationary energy storage area because the energy density is lower than NMC. The last and final thing you want to understand and then you are really ready to talk to a battery expert are three little numbers that are added to the cathode material description. N NMC 111, NMC 211, 811, 235. People come up with all these numbers and what it actually means is NMC 111 means there is the same amount of nickel, manganese and cobalt in there. If it's 811 then the nickel part is increased so there is way more nickel in there which actually helps with the energy density. Congratulations! You can now be part of the conversation and talk like a battery expert and also understand all the headlines that you find in the news. I'm just showing this battery hierarchy that I defined throughout this video one more time. It is by far not complete. This was not the goal of the video. The goal of this video was really just showing you the hierarchy and the structure and the nomenclature. So now and in future, if somebody tells you Tesla came up with a new cell, it's 4680 NMC cell. What do you know now? You know, it's a cylindrical cell. It has 46 millimeter diameter. It has 80 millimeter length. The cathode material is NMC and the anode material is very likely graphite because this is what's state of the art. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.